Partner. Oh. Is this mine? Yeah, right. Here's the You smell it. Alright. <laughs> Is this mine? Hmm. I was just smelling it because I wanted to smell it, not because I thought it might smell different if it was yours. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so we're officially leaving Las Vegas. We've been here for Kind of too long. Longer than expected. Finally heading to Tennessee. Bonnaroo's coming up, so we gotta get over there. And we're meeting up with my mom, who I haven't seen since December. Well, Ed and Bertha are gonna meet finally. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be awesome. I kind of like planned out how I'm hoping the road trip will go so that we don't have to drive more than like five or six hours in a day and we can hit gyms every day. I think we're gonna do it in like five days. Yeah. Woo! I'm really excited though. I'm excited to leave Vegas. We love Vegas. We do love Vegas. Oh, I have a hair on my phone, of course. So that's how far we have to go, which is a day and three hours to approximately the point where we're planning on meeting up with my mom. A day and three hours. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely the longest road trip I've ever done. Longest road trip you've ever done. For sure. But today, we just get to Flagstaff. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> Place. Thank you. Place. Can't wait to see you. I need to see my girl. All right, mom. We're on our way to you. I miss you and I love you. All right, so we just went into REI over there. It's like super busy today. I don't really know why. I think there's like some event or maybe everyone's getting ready to go camping. But we found the portable charger that we wanted and we're just like trying to get the van all ready for the hot weather because it's definitely gonna be really hot at Bonnaroo. It's gonna be hot just in general now because it's summer and we're trying to like really be prepared for that because we do not want it to be miserable to be in here. So. We're gearing up for that. Show you guys what we got. Um, we went to REI and Home Depot. And we're gonna have to like get crafty and make some stuff for the windows and stuff. So we'll show you guys what we got later. But yeah, we're in Flagstaff now. Um, Tyler is peeing. And then we'll probably find somewhere to camp for tonight. We've camped here before. So I think I know where we'll go. It was free, super nice like private area. So that's what's up. But tonight we're sleeping in Flagstaff, obviously and it's at I don't know however many feet and so it's gonna be pretty cold so we'll be we'll be fine but after tonight it's gonna start heating up this is probably the last cool night that we'll have when we were in REI I got this picky bars and it has a picture of peanut butter cups on there but it's supposed to be like healthier so I'm gonna give it a shot because I freaking love peanut butter cups but you know they're just not very good for you so let's give this a shot doesn't look that good actually how was it? I had a surprise pooping adventure. <laughs> I want you to think about that while you're eating that brown thing. <laughs> Ew! It does look like a turd. It's, it not, it's just absolutely nothing like a Reese's peanut butter cup. I created I'm devastated. Them. I don't like it. I mean, it's not bad, but like, it's just not what I was expecting. Chosen the spookiest of spots. <laughs> so how do you feel? We have the first day complete. I feel like we got five, four or five more to go. So we found our spot that we're gonna sleep. This is like the same spot we found when we were here like a month ago. And I am extremely tired because I actually was in Miami yesterday shooting a music video. I'll show you guys or tell you guys when that's out. But the flying and like the time differences made it so I'm super tired. So I'm hopefully just gonna like crash. How do I look? Day 
two. We're gonna be heading towards Albuquerque, New Mexico. After we go anywhere east of Flagstaff, I don't think Tyler or I have been on any of the roads over there. So I'm super excited because I love seeing new roads and new states. But I think we're gonna get to meet up with one of my like best friends from LA, Megan, who's from uh, Albuquerque. So she happens to be there this weekend. We didn't plan this, it's freaking crazy to me. So I think we're gonna stay at her place tonight. Yeah, here we go, day two. We slept for like 12 hours by the way. <laughs> freaking 11 30 at Megan's house so well, 10 30 our time our yeah hour. it's an hour later here so we just kind of like got up and we're gonna hit the road because we didn't mean to sleep that late <laughs> oh my god that was a lot hey, my knuckles are dry okay <laughs> always refilling the water it's literally you've been going through so much water Gas here is so much cheaper than it is in Washington, California. How much was that? 60 bucks. 60 bucks? That's way better. We're gonna try to drive for like four and a half hours. Hopefully hit the gym. Yesterday we tried to hit the gym, but they were all closed and I was pretty devastated. And then we're gonna try to drive a little bit more. And actually I realized I think this trip is six days long. Fitness size right by your head. That's perfect. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go work out. We've been driving and driving and listening to Joe Rogan's podcast. Highly recommend it if you've never listened to it. This is my first time like listening to full episodes and it's really good. <laughs> Very educational. And then we're just gonna keep basically that. And it's totally cool to work out at Planet Fitness, by the way. Yeah, come on. <laughs> we're making it a thing. So, we made it into Oklahoma, we slept at a truck stop last night, well we kind of slept, it was hard. We did laundry at like 3 or 4 in the morning, let me see if I can get you in this. There we go. Uh, because we couldn't sleep because it was freaking hot and we didn't like, we haven't figured out our cooling situation quite yet so we gotta get that on lock ASAP because we did not sleep much last night. We've just been cruising and listening to podcasts and highly enjoying and learning information about random shit. Oh, the mic hasn't been pointing at us. So hopefully you can fucking hear what we were saying. Probably. I'm not about to re-say it. But anyways, uh, Oklahoma is much more green finally, which I definitely like. I'll check with you guys later. Day five. Last night we tried to sleep in the van in a parking lot because there's no like camping places um near the freeway it was so hot even with our freaking air conditioner thing we got it was like we were just wet it's so humid here oh we're in arkansas i don't even know if i said that but anyways arkansas you are sweaty so we found a super eight today we'll basically get to nashville and then we kind of have to wait for a package in nashville and then the next day we'll see my mom so that's what's up what was that? We're on our way to Georgia. We made it to Tennessee yesterday, and then we ended up staying in a hotel in 
Nashville, which was super nice. And then today I like checked in with my mom and she was driving up from Florida, which is where she's been spending the last like, she's been there since like December or January or something. Sorry, the mic's falling. And she went through this part of Georgia that she really, really liked and she found a campground and so we ended up just deciding to meet there. She was barely on the other side of the border between Tennessee and Georgia. So that's where we're heading now. So today is finally the day that I get to see my mom and I'm so excited. We're just excited to be like in one place for the next, I think, three or four nights because we've been driving a shit ton. Tyler has been driving a shit ton, I should say, and I have been you know, doing other shit like uh, finding which podcast to listen to. So yeah, we've basically become geniuses because we've listened to all of Joe Rogan's top podcasts, some of Dr. Phil, some who else? Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're just trying to absorb the wisdom, so we'll share some of that that we learned with you guys. We are like two hours out, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We're um, still two hours out. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Trip's almost over, and I'm so glad, although I don't think I've learned as much as I have in the last five days as I have in the last year. <laughs> Since we're almost at the end of our road trip, I figured I would just read some of the, I kind of like took notes on the podcast that we listened to on anything that like really meant something to me or like the either of us like talking about or whatever. So um, I'm just going to like read them to you guys and we're going to kind of like talk about them a little bit just so that this vlog has like some substance and something else other than just here we are now and this is what it looks like. What's number one? The first one, okay. it just says if you compare your personal truth, what you know about yourself to everybody else's social mask. It's Dr. Phil and Joe Rogan. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, he's basically just saying like, I feel like we, we all get so down on ourselves just because like we know what's going on like in our home life or what we think about ourselves and all, you know, like who we think that we are and then we compare that to who other people put on display for us to see which yeah. is like we have no idea what's actually going on with them or like what they portray on social media or whatever it is but we still like compare ourselves to them and it just like it doesn't make any sense if you're looking at someone and you're comparing yourself to what you're seeing you're literally comparing yourself to something that's not real like, because it's their mask, like she said, the social mask. Like, my Instagram is not a reflection of who I actually am at all. So for somebody to compare themselves to that is fine, but it's not actually me, so it's not an accurate comparison. Yeah. The next one is, uh, we generate the results in life that we think we deserve, which is just so true. If you go around in life thinking like, oh, I'm not deserving of this car or this person or whatever then that's what you're going to attract is something less than what you actually really want basically if you don't think you deserve to be rich or you think you do deserve to be middle class or lower class then you will eventually like chase being that like whether you are aware of it or not that's what you're going to get if you don't think you deserve more the next one says make incremental changes the year will go by whether you make changes or not uh, write down what you want to get done on a long term and short term and find some way to have accountability uh, someday is not a day of the week so that was kind of like a big summary of one of the podcasts that we listened to um, which is just such a good point because I feel like we all like have goals and we all have like big goals sometimes but it's like okay just think of something smaller and just get that done and then you can feel accomplished in that and then you can move on to another thing and then before you know it you've made huge changes in your life without even really doing anything that drastic and I think their analogy was um, if you have two boats that are going parallel to each other and you turn one just like five degrees or less over time that boat will eventually be super far in a different direction if you change 
everything at once, which people like to do. People like to, to like have a random moment where they're like, all right, I'm gonna stop smoking, I'm gonna stop eating fast food, I'm gonna start going to the gym, and they change all these things all in the same day. It becomes overwhelming, and you can't do it all at once. If you stop each one individually, like by doing small things every day, like I stopped smoking by switching to a Juul, which I'm sure everyone knows what that is, and then I slowly stopped smoking that, and just, I don't know, I took weird steps to be able to do it. Like I stopped smoking my jewel in areas that I couldn't smoke a normal cigarette and then I stopped smoking every time someone else was smoking and just things like that. So just taking small steps and then eventually you'll be somewhere else. It took me a long time. It took me like over two years to quit smoking and, and now I stopped, so. Yeah, that's like such a good point too, is like making sure that you're giving yourself enough time to achieve what you want and like not being hard on yourself if you do remembering that Sunday is not a day of the week. You just have to start. You don't yeah. have to do something drastic or anything like that. Just start something. Just something small. Yeah. Oprah was like giving this example of, she was talking about really encouraging people to do what they really want to do in life and not just do something because you're already however many years into doing it. And she gave the example of this one girl who was like, well, some like my parents have already paid 20 whatever thousand dollars on my education in this specific area and even though I don't want to do that anymore I have to stick to it because they've already invested so much money I think it was actually way more than no it was a hundred it was like a hundred and fifty thousand yeah it was like a hundred fifty thousand dollars they've invested way too much money I cannot quit now like this is what I'm doing and Oprah was like how much is your life worth is your life worth a hundred fifty thousand dollars and I just, that was impactful for me because I know there's so many people out there, or me, you know, you invest time in a career or education and money and all this stuff, and then you feel like you're stuck in it. But it's like, what is your life worth? It's okay to change what you're doing. You don't have to do the same thing for your whole life. In fact, that was another one is like, you shouldn't just stick to one thing for your whole life. Try out different things. Uh, and then in the one that we're listening to right now, um I think it's Joe Rogan and this guy named Hav. He's Naval. Naval. He's explaining how if you do want to change something or to create something, don't keep it to yourself. Like it's more powerful to broadcast it to people around you because then you kind of have like a res like a responsibility to a go. A social contract. A social like yeah, a social contract. It's like holding your feet to the fire with like what you're what you said you're gonna do. You're gonna do it. Like back to the smoking thing. Like I didn't like I wanted to quit, but before I told people, I didn't really have a reason to to quit. You know, like until I told people like, hey, I'm gonna quit. Then they started holding me responsible. Yeah, yeah. So it's like finding a way to have accountability. Like we were talking about earlier, is like telling other people that could be one way to have accountability. And then the last one, I think this is also the same guy said this one, a desire is a contract you make with yourself to be unhappy until you get what you want. Oh, this is a big one. And I like, like this one a lot. Yeah, it was like, oh shit, like it's a good point. And he says like, it's natural and normal for us to have desires, so that's okay. But he's basically suggesting that we should limit them. Like just have one or two main desires and then everything else just let it fucking happen. He said you can suffer on one desire, like suffer with that, but everything else just kind of let it flow and don't decide to be unhappy because you don't have whatever said desire is yeah. right now. Yeah. Like, so if your desire is to have a six pack and you're a dude and you don't have it yet, don't decide to be unhappy with yourself until you have it. Like, that's what he's kind of talking about. Yeah, yeah. Just be aware of if you're letting yourself be unhappy just because you don't have your desire. Yeah, I just wanted to share those things with you guys just because they meant a lot to us and I think it's just like good stuff to share and thank you to uh, all the people who sent these things to us so we can share them with you. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're pretty close to where we're going to meet up with my mom. I'm so excited to see her. It's been so long. Um, and that's all. <laughs> this is where my land navigation skills come in. <laughs> we finally made it we're having a celebration rice cake this trip ended up being like 2,000 miles of driving so we're gonna go find bertha now my mom and her bus are parked nearby so we're gonna go find her this is where we are staying for now do you have the keys yeah it's really pretty
We made it all the way from Las Vegas and now we're lost. <laughs> I don't know how to get to our campsite. I think I see it. I think that's her. We found her. <laughs> Hello? Hello? 